As a MEF Sergeant Major, I want to continue to push the understanding to our Marines and all of our forces that they play a significant role here in the Pacific. Our mission is a vital and important one, and it contributes to our morale and the readiness of our force. So I've always been a, a believer in service to one's nation, service to the institution, and to giving back. We have the good fortune of being service members in that the very nature of our job uh, is to give back and, and defend our nation. As part of that, we are a role model, we are a, a sample to society of what, in my opinion, what a human being should be doing uh, through their life. And uh, it's very important for me that, that uh, we portray the example as good American citizens as we serve overseas because we truly are an example uh, for all societies across the world and I really believe that. I, I think the opportunity to serve uh, in this position uh, really gives me uh, the chance to show not only our Marines and sailors but all service members and family members uh, what it is to be an American citizen, to be a role model uh, both ethically, morally, uh, and, but also in your military profession. I think that a lot of people look at us as service members, uh, in my case as a United States Marine, and they're looking for that person to follow. And I hope to be that example for everyone because I truly believe uh, that serving overseas it's an honor, it's a privilege. I have uh, about 18 years total of overseas time, including my deployments. And uh, th the best part about serving overseas is that you get to be an ambassador. And a lot of us really don't take that seriously. We really are blessed to have the opportunity to serve as ambassadors of the United States of America. You know, my, my experience is, is pretty vast uh, when you come to overseas assignments, everything from combat tours to to humanitarian operations, uh, but also simply on everyday engagement. Uh, you know, anytime you go to any one of our partner nations or even just some of the other nations that we are, are, are working with or visiting, uh, every interaction that you have as a service member uh, is really an opportunity to be an ambassador. So all the time, every time that you're overseas engaging with any person in any other nation, is your opportunity and so my experience will tell me that you know what makes it so exciting to be here overseas is that that is a consistent opportunity and so there isn't one event per se that that uh, I remember it's my entire experience of serving overseas you know apart from marrying my wife who's, who's a beautiful and wonderful woman uh, she is my family uh, the Marine Corps has been my life I've, I've done this since I was 18 years old uh, I've served in every MEF in the Marine Corps, I've served in the Middle East, I've served overseas, I've served in Europe. Uh, but truly the diversity of having that experience, I believe is what really has made me the leader I am. It, it has exposed me to, to, to so many cultures, both in the United States and overseas, that it has really rounded out my personality. It has taught me about life, it has taught me about people and what they go through, what affects their life, what affects their cultures, why they make decisions that they make. And, and all that as a whole really has uh, encompassed truly my personality. Being a Marine has just made that a little bit more refined, but uh, the adventure of meeting people all across the world has, has been truly the defining set of moments that has made me who I am today. Japanese society is a very respectful, very peaceful, and very safe society. That is, that is my impression. I've lived in Japan for a total of about 13 years. My wife is, is a Japanese, she's of Okinawan descent, but society as a whole, you, you always hear Americans here in Japan, usually the description of a Japanese experience is, it's so safe, it's so peaceful, my kids can go anywhere and I'm not worried about. That truly defines Japanese society. Another thing that I think is important about Japanese society is service to, to everyone else but yourself. They hold customer service, just all the little things about every engagement with any individual in any aspect of society. They go out of their way to make your experience the best uh, no matter what, and that's truly a special part about Japan. I met my wife here at the end of my first tour, uh, 1994, and uh, we dated for a while, and then uh, we were married right prior to me departing to Camp Pendleton, California. Uh, and she joined me a few months later, and. and uh, 
we served in the States for about 13 years uh, before we ever came back to Okinawa, but uh, we bounced around all across the United States. So I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco State in Mexico, uh, but we emigrated to the United States, Cali Los Angeles, California. A uh, little place uh, where I grew up is called Hawaiian Gardens, California, and uh, we lived in L.A. County pretty much since I was four years old. So I, I grew up speaking English uh, at school, outside the home, and at home we spoke Spanish. And uh, that was kind of our standard and our way of learning both languages. My parents held us to that, so appreciative of that. We emigrated to California when I was four years old. Uh, and and I, I lived in California all the way until I joined the Marine Corps. I was 17 years old. Uh, but I, I went to college and did a little bit of work for about a year and a half before I actually joined the Marine Corps. And, figured out that I wasn't satisfied with civilian life and the local happening, so I wanted to do something bigger and better. And uh, I looked for the toughest service I could find, and Marine Corps met the description, and that's where I went. My, my parents uh, were a huge influence in, in my upbringing. You know, my parents both worked two jobs the entire time that I grew up. They had no time to come see us in school. So I was the oldest of four brothers, and uh, I was kind of a father figure. Uh, we had to cook for ourselves, we had to, you know, do our homework, we had to take care of each other, we had to help each other, we had to do all the chores. We had to maintain the home. And, but my parents had to work and we understood that and we were never upset and to this day I'm not upset at my parents. Were it not for my parents putting food on the table, we would not be where we are today. And, you know, myself and all of my brothers, thank goodness we are all doing well, we've all succeeded and we've been successful in, in our lives and it's, it's all in part because of my parents and how hard they worked uh, to get us where we are today. You know, to all, to all our young Marines out there, I would tell you, never lose the focus on why you joined the Marine Corps. Always keep that at the forefront of your mind. The second thing I'll tell you is remember that you joined to serve. Even though you had your own opinion, the Marine Corps is a service of service. And the moment you lose that you are here to serve others and you're here to serve your country, is the day that you're going to go astray. The third thing is focus on the little things. Discipline. Take care of yourself. Be a good Marine. Don't let anybody ever question your integrity and your value in every single unit that you are ever a part of. And those are really the basics. Once you do all that, as you stay in the Marine Corps longer, you do more and more difficult things. As you do more and more difficult things, those more difficult things become easier and you're going to seek tougher and harder assignments. And as you do all that, you strengthen who you are as a Marine, you become a valuable, even more amazing asset to any of your commanders. And that's what commanders want. They want a Marine that they can count on. They want a Marine that can do anything they ask them with without question. And that's what I think that I've worked on throughout my career, and I hope that I've met that standard. Commitment. Uh, why commitment? You know, many a times in society, we, we, get, we are taught to have goals. And I've always had goals, but my goals have always been near term. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can't make Sergeant Major as a corporal unless you pick up Sergeant. So I focused on being a Sergeant first. And then I focused on being a Staff Sergeant, Gunner Sergeant, and so on and so forth. So the importance of the near term goals collectively end up getting you to your end state, but you have to achieve those close-term goals. And I think it's important to have close-term goals and continuous refinement so that when you get to the position you want to be in, ideally, you're going to be that perfect role model, mentor, and example for all those in your profession. One of the things that I think it's, it's very important as you grow up in the military is you have to be an example to, to all ranks, regardless of your rank. So, for example, I have Marines now that I consider mentors that are two ranks below me. They're gunner sergeants. I have Marines that are the same rank as I am, and I have mentors, uh, I said that wrong, I have Marines that are mentors that are the same rank as me. I also have Marines that are mentors that are senior to me. Uh, my point being, uh, regardless of the level you're at, I have always strived to be a mentor and example as a leader, because I was raised from day one that you lead, as a leader of Marines, you're leading all Marines. The opportunity for you is there to lead at all different levels and uh, you just never know what's going to happen and you're going to have to step up in a position of higher responsibility and so I've always tried to prepare myself 
for positions of high responsibility by being that go-to Marine. Well, you know, the challenges is obviously visually you have a rank on your collar, which is, may not be typically associated with what you're trying to do. So, for example, if, if I'm trying to tackle a task as a corporal, where normally a staff sergeant would be doing it, let's say a platoon sergeant job, which I actually did as a corporal, uh, you, you may not get the whole credibility. You have to earn your, your trust and respect from your senior leaders who may be holding that same job. So that's just an example is throughout my career, I've always filled more senior billets and I kind of had to earn the respect of the people around me. But once I did, uh, they, they were uh, an integral part and crucial in my development for that next rank.